Marie, I believe the floor is yours, uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was trying to adjust some things. Good evening to everyone. Thanks for everyone that made it here tonight for all your hard work and dedication to Team Robert 2024. We all believe that Dr. Roland Robert is indeed the next president of the United States of America, and we are applauding him for that. But I'm so happy that everyone is here tonight. Please uh, come in with questions that you want to ask. You know, Dr. Robert is here. He's open. He's here for the African immigrant. He's here for all Americans, everyone around the world. You know, he's, he's the people president. So we want everyone to feel free and welcome aboard to all our new teammates. We are glad that you are here. And we want to take Dr. Robert to victory on January 15. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shelley. Clap. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Marie. It's great to see you and great to see everyone tonight on this uh, wonderful Friday evening. We've been having some wonderful times together every single night. And we are in the home stretch. I mean, it is one week from Monday. Uh, the miracle in Iowa will be complete. And what we do over these next few days determines everything. Not one political pundit sees us coming. Not one other candidate believes that this will happen. No one uh, that has been traditionally engaged in historically in Iowa caucuses believe that you can mobilize the Iowa immigrant community to actually affect change. And I don't believe that because I know that God is doing a great miracle through each of you. And that's why we're here tonight, uh, so that we can continue to organize and to mobilize and uh, to work together towards this objective. I can tell you, it's I love when it's not me. I love when it's not about me. And I love when it's not my machinations, uh, my strategies and my cunningness or craftiness. Forget all of that. Uh, this entire strategy was formed supernaturally a couple weeks ago, literally right before Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, and then ever since. And it's to the uh, really all due to the leadership of uh, Dr. Wilson, uh, Pastor Success, and so many others of the leadership in Iowa. Uh, they are passionate. Uh, I believe they are effectively passionate. There's a lot of activists for a lot of different causes. But a lot of usually with most activism, it's only a handful making a lot of noise. That is not the immigrant community in the United States. There is a loyalty, there is a camaraderie that politics and politicians have never seen. I see it because I, I'm with you so much, but but politics has not seen it. The media hasn't seen it. And this is going to showcase, you have a world stage to show the world who you are, how you unite towards a single objective. It was Socrates who said that the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. If you look at politics today, most people are simply fighting the old. Both sides are fighting each other. The rhetoric every day oh, yeah, is yeah. just continuously uh, uh, so filled with hatred and vitriol. And it's everyone is just fighting what has been. We have to move past what has been. We have to build the future. It is an active and, and, and an action uh, item that we must take. And so uh, how I'm doing that is my vision for America is not merely one of policy, even though we have a lot of policies at RolandRoberts.com. I have all of the policies, whether it's education, immigration. None of these came, by the way, from a political consultant. Each one of our policies, we have scripture references next to because I didn't want to just go by what the Republican Party says. I didn't want to go by what the Democrat Party says or any other party says. I wanted to go by what does 
Jehovah God believe that is ha ha to have God's blessing on any nation in the world, what's the right way to educate children? What's the right way to have family? How do you strengthen a nation? How do you secure a nation? Bible is filled with king uh, instructions to kings on how to protect their citizens. So these are all of the, the matters that there's a lot of, of, of historical data on that, uh, that we built the policies on. And so it's not just, you know, I ate some, some bad pizza one night and came up with some policies, and that's what we have. Uh, and it's not that we paid a bunch of money to a bunch of lobbyists to tell us uh, what legislation they want to further their interests. Every single policy truly, I believe, was divinely ordained as to what America needs now at this time in human history. If you had had me be president 20 years ago, it would be completely different. If you had me be president 40 years from now, it would be completely different because it will be based on the way things are. But the difference is the principles don't change. And that's what we have laid out. All of the policies are not built on what's expedient today for any one particular interest group. It is what is the right thing to do by every person and nation and by God Almighty. And so uh, that's that's kind of been uh, where we're coming from. Uh, it's not uh, my my policies. It's not something. My vision's not for uh, about personal. Uh, it's not about getting retribution or avenging past grievance, grievances. Uh, our campaign and our candidacy is so different than every other presidential candidate uh, that I've even ever seen campaigning for president in my lifetime. And I believe that the ripple effects of the United States doing right by people and nations around the world uh, will, ha will will reverberate and have all kinds of uh, of positive uh, benefits for people all around the world. So I'm glad you're with us tonight to learn how we're building the new, as Socrates said. And so, uh, and I know we had so many new uh, leaders that have joined us now in uh, in Iowa. I want to welcome each one of you here. Uh, we're going to talk about some wonderful things tonight. Uh, the world is in an interesting state. Right is called wrong and wrong is called right. Uh, many people will tell you th that don't even watch the news that the world is just upside down right now. If, if, if you tell me that the, the trees are uh, the green or the sky is blue, they're going to tell you it's something else. It's it's. They want you to deny what you're actually seeing, and there's something in every human spirit that acknowledges this isn't right. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of uh, news and noise about the Miami Mall, uh, you know, incident, and uh, once again, it it certainly looks like a government cover up and. The people can't handle the truth, so let's lie to them. Uh, and, you know, of course, what I recognize is it is a spiritual war. Of course, it's there's going to be beings and creatures that because we, the enemy is ramping up his work, his evil work on earth in these end times. And it is, and the United States of America needs a president who knows how to fight spiritual wars. We keep looking at the credentials as if we're still living in a 1950 America. We're not. Borders are being redrawn around the world. Obviously, Israel and, and uh, Gaza and Russia and Ukraine and Crimea and Belarus uh, and many Eastern Bloc nations, the Middle East uh, is, is redrawing borders even as we speak. Even the United States of America, uh, you know, we're looking at Puerto Rican statehood again. You've got uh, the Hawaii that um, the indigenous uh, tribes uh, the, of the Polynesians uh, are looking to reclaim I, uh, Hawaii uh, as as their rightful uh, nation and not as a state of the United States. Even our own country, the lines are being redrawn and everything is fluid. Everything is fluid in the world today. That's unsettling for most people. And if you watch the news for any length of time, you're probably going to start getting a stomach ache because 
uh, and stressed out of your mind because you realize how helpless we are as individual citizens. But we, you and I, have nothing to fear because, and we are told, don't be afraid of sudden fear, of sudden destruction. It, it may happen to 10,000, may fall at your right hand, uh, and it will not come nigh your dwelling. I'm telling you, when you walk and you know how to fight spiritual war, you don't have to fear like everybody else who is used to walking according to sight. The, even, even Christians, believers, people of faith, walk according to sight. Very, very few people walk by faith. And that's yet yeah, that's the only place where we can be blessed, uh, fully blessed. Uh, and encouraged. And then when we see all of the negative and all of the bad, we don't get depressed. We don't have to start taking antidepressants. We don't have to start uh, uh, resorting to alcohol or resorting to other soothing agents to try to numb our emotions because we can't process them. Instead, we are able to look objectively at what is happening in the world and saying, we know how to deal with this. We know how to fight it. Everybody else may want to crawl under a rock Everyone else may be running scared for their life, but we know how to deal with this problem. I have seen this problem. We know how to address it. And it's not by passing more legislation. And it's not by just vote for me and this, everything will be different. No, righteousness exalts a nation. Proverbs 14, 34 is very clear on how a nation is blessed. And of course, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, you cannot escape that it is the responsibility of all those that name the name of Christ in the land uh, for God's blessing to be on America again. It is all of us together. That's why I'm so excited about this. Most campaigns are just about the candidate, the candidate, the candidate. That is not what our campaign is about. So at a time when the world is in great turmoil, it is. We are, the earth is hemorrhaging. Uh, tor tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, uh, climate anomalies, uh, violence. People losing their minds. Obviously, we dealt with uh, so the school, the mass shooting yesterday at the school in Perry, Iowa. It is happening over and over and over. The mental illness that is sweeping over our land and the younger generation, uh, because the enemy always fights for the mind of our youth. He always wants to attack the mind, and that's why we have what almost it's two uh, over two, two point three out of every three adults that are on some type of antidepressant. That itself is depressing because that means we have not taught people how to address and handle problems and we are creating it. And the, the sad fact is we have leaders who want more people popping pills and to have to need pills to go to sleep, need pills to wake up, need pills to get moving, need pills to start thinking. Uh, it is absolutely insane uh, that we are drugging uh, and people are doing it voluntarily. Uh, they're not having to, to force it because we've been so indoctrinated uh, that that is the answer. As a sidebar, I will tell you, under rollandroberts.com backslash policies, when you scroll down, uh, we've got the policies, we've got my day one agenda. We then have uh, my executive orders that I will be passing immediately. I talked last night about the 2026 automobile kill switch that goes into effect that I would be revoking. Another one, uh, is on is on these very this very topic where I would uh, issue an executive order to stop allowing with the FCC to allowing or the FTC to uh, allowing uh, pharmaceutical companies to market uh, drugs directly to consumers. That's insanity. Uh, and so because you can easily convince people who have not studied medicine and who have not studied science and the body and people have not gone to medical school, it's a lot easier to do, you know, your grandpa sitting at home where it's got, you know, some, 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 some problems. And then they have this lovely commercial that makes him think that it's going to solve his problem and it's going to create 10 other problems. They don't ever just issue one, uh, one prescription. They issue three or four because they issue one to solve the problem you came in for and three to combat the effects that the one they issued is going to create in you. I'm telling you, uh, it's not right. Uh, and I'm running for president to do right by American citizens and to do right by all people and nations on earth. America needs God. And an America without God will fail. And so with your help and the help of Almighty God, 
The miracle in Iowa will happen a week from Monday, January 15th at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And we want you to, to sign up. We have the sign up sheet uh, for the caucuses uh, that they'll be posting in the chat. Uh, if you're watching this on social media uh, and not as actual a part of the Zoom, then you can feel free to put different comments. Uh, also, those who are directly engaged in the Zoom, you're able to post questions throughout our time together tonight. And uh, at the end, uh, when everyone is concluded, I'll address as many of those as I possibly can. So go ahead right now, click that link so that you can choose which location that you will are pledging to be at and to nominate and stand and support and vote Roland Roberts for president. You can click that link, put that in so we know how many more slots we need to fill. Uh, you know, I know God will do whatever it takes to it to accomplish his goals, what he wants to see done, his will on January 15th. I know that without a single shred of doubt in my mind. He will do whatever he has to do. For Joshua, one time he made the sun stand still for 24 hours. Uh, he has done miracles. By He helped David leap over a wall one time. He, he has done so many miraculous things to accomplish his will that if he will be glorified regardless of the outcome, we've already won because of what the work that you have done. Uh, and so we, we praise him for that. But I'll tell you, uh, I believe that that he will do whatever it takes. And I think it will be a sight to behold. And each one of you are a part of it. Uh, you can never go back and rewind the clock. Uh, we were talking today, uh, some, some, some of my team and I, that after God does what he's going to do with our campaign, everyone's going to come out of the woodwork. They're going to be throwing money at us left and right. They're going to be talking about how they, they've they been watching this whole time and knew that we were going to have our breakout moment and yada, yada, just all the flapping of the jaws, you know, and, you know, and I'll smile and be polite, but that never works on me. I, I've, I've, I've been around too long and too many high level uh, and interesting situations around the world that. I can see through people in a nanosecond, uh, even though they actually don't even see it in themselves. Uh, and and so, it, but it is you, it is each of you who are here tonight, Friday night, nine days, 10 days before you vote. You are the ones, you are the champions. And I've said many times in business that champions are made when the stands are empty. You know, everybody's there, you know, when you have the moment. But champions are made when the stands are empty. And you are the troops. You are the ones who have mobilized and activated. And so I just want to thank you. Uh, we are running hard. Uh, and I know that uh, the world is going to be blessed. There's so many different things that people like to talk to me about. They like to talk about BRICS, uh, currency. They like to talk about what's happening with the de-dollarization. Uh, they like to talk about what's happening with national security. They like to talk about uh, you know, the economy and the debt and jobs and artificial intelligence and cybersecurity, uh, military and weapons and wars of the future and information wars and disinformation wars and cyber wars, uh, military wars, uh, psyops, you know, uh, so many different topics we can we can do and then take every single policy and every single issue. Uh, there is much to be done, but we focus on the thing that that matters more than anything, and that is America needs God. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, our Iowa leaders for them to extend their words of support and why they're uh, behind us and why they believe that uh, others should as well. Uh, and then I also would ask each of them to invite, uh, to introduce uh, the guests that you have uh, tonight as well. I know we have a number of honorable uh, leaders and so uh, I want to give them a chance to, to speak. Uh, I want to start with the head of our Latino caucus uh, Mr. Senor Miguel Vilas. Uh, Senor Vilas is, is, is a wonderful man, has an incredible family. Uh, and, uh, and so I'd like for him to be able to share a word on why the Hispanics and Latino communities uh, in Iowa and 
around the country are supporting Roland Roberts for president. So, senor, buenos dias. Hello, everyone. How are you, Mr. President? Uh, es un honor estar aquí junto a ustedes. It's an honor being here with everybody. Por estos últimos diez días que nos quedan. These last couple of ten days that are left. Para el gran día. For the great day to come. Es es muy lamentable. It's very sad. Escuchar. Hearing. Que hoy por hoy personas como that, nosotros, that today people like us, tocadas por Dios, uh, touched by God himself, en un mundo donde se vive de tanta mentira, in a world with so much lies, nosotros decimos la verdad, we say the truth, y es incómodo muchas and veces. it's bad, it's considered bad most of the time. Los latinos, latinos, están unidos hoy con Mr. Roland Roberts, are united with Mr. Roland Roberts today, for this reason, for one main reason, una de las grandes cosas, one of the great things, es que es uno, that, en la historia that he's like one of the most like the only one in history que apoya a los latinos dentro de los Estados Unidos of the Republicans that actually supports the Latinos y eso es algo que no está visto en muchos años that you that people not, haven't seen in a while you know tenemos a DeSantis we have DeSantis que está sacando a los latinos del país taking out Latinos Donald Trump, Donald Trump poniendo barreras putting walls and stuff y es el único presidente and he's the only president futuro presidente president, que está apoyando that is supporting la emigración en los Estados Unidos con personas como, como yo, with people like como him otras personas and other type of people están viniendo a aportar a este país that are coming here to live a better life. y nos sentimos muy orgullosos por eso. And we feel very happy about that. Personalmente, Personally, Mr. Roland Robert sabe que tiene he, mi apoyo he knows that he has our full support, incondicional, uh, unconditional, by the way. Lluvia o truene, uh, if it thunderstorms or rains, ahí. we're what we will be with him. Porque Dios, por alguna razón, God, reason, hoy en día, today, nos unió a cada uno para lograr grandes cosas. To make great things happen. Thank you. Que tengan una, buen, Have a great una day. buena noche. Muchas gracias, señor. Muchas gracias. I, I will say God has never needed the masses. He's always used a person or a small group of people. Always. You will never find where he used great masses of people to yeah. accomplish the most that. historical things that have ever happened in the world. And so I uh, acknowledge what you're saying and yeah. believe in the might yeah. of this group. Yeah. So yeah. muchas gracias. We're, we're, we're grateful for you, for your leadership, uh, and for who you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ron. Thank you. Uh, so now I'd like to uh, uh, go ahead and bring on, uh, let's bring... Uh, Dr. Wilson, uh, I would like for you to be able to say a word at, and introduce uh, those that you would like to have uh, as well. Thank you, uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, I'm trying to try, like I see uh, Pastor Cyrus is here in Iowa. I know Pastor Sosa is already going to introduce other people. And I want to be as Brown Brown, am I right? Even though your name don't show, but I recognize the face. Can you just wave so I can let you know that I do remember my brother, Brown Brown? Okay. And then uh, uh, brother Richard, uh, Richard Miller is here. And I'm happy to have him. He's in um, Delaware State. And he's had committed himself to be part of this team. He started multiple lives in people already in um, Delaware. And he, you know, I, I would just ask if we later on can give me an opportunity to say something now that he showed his face. He's not hiding behind the camera no more. So if you can say something, you know, he's uh, one of the former uh, presidential candidates during the last election in Liberia. I'm putting you on the spot. So you are used to this. Don't act like you're not used to this, uh, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Anyone else, if I overlook you from Iowa, I'm sorry, but I'm happy that all of you guys are here. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Honorable Miller, why don't you go ahead and uh, give a word of greeting and thank you uh, for your support and leadership in Delaware and also uh, in Liberia. I, I One of the things that most Americans don't understand, I, I understand because I've spent so much time in Africa uh, and other countries, but Americans don't understand that so many immigrants who come here, they go back, and many of them go back to be leaders in their homelands and their mother nations. And so uh, we're glad to have you. The floor is yours. I'll mute. Thank you so much, 
Dr. Wilson, yeah. Dr. Roberts, and uh, everybody on the team. Um, thank you so much for having me here. Um, this is really the first time I've been involved uh, in any campaign for any uh, politician here in the US. Uh, Dr. Wilson told me about uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, and from the beginning, I've been tracking Dr. Roberts, praying and asking myself and asking the Lord, I say, is this man, the things that he's saying is, does he really, really believe in you, God? Because I've never heard uh, a politician here in the US. I've been here over 30, 33 years for me to be so moved to even, you know, when Dr. Wilson told me about Dr. Roberts and from the beginning when he made the announcement and I and I said to her, I said, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and, and listen to him. And from, from that point on, I thank God so much because your campaign reminds me of mine because it's like David versus Goliath. And all of the things that you're talking about is all about how God will make the changes that are necessary. Because people like you and people that are here now, and even people that are outside of the Zoom call, you know, God can, 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 anoint people to do certain things. And, and I just feel like this is the time where they're anointing and not just the policies and the things that you talk about, but really inside your heart. I just feel so, I mean, it's almost like, uh, I, I it's like, you know, only God can bring certain kind of people to get into politics who can go across every aisle. So I just want to I just want to say thank you and that um, we'll continue to pray for you. For me, I'm gonna do everything possible to go down there to Iowa uh, to support you just like everybody else, uh, and to do everything we can financially to uh, support you as well. And thank you so much for your team. And everybody, let's continue to pray because people may say, oh, well, it may not be, or it may not be this, but only God knows. Only God knows because the changes that God wants here in this country, God has to be in the center of everything that goes on in the world and in the US. If we don't put God at the center, Everything, Dr. Robert, that you're talking about as far as the country going a different direction wouldn't work. And for you, it's not even about you being a Republican, a Democrat. You're just a decent human being. Thank you so much for the time. And I, I look forward to be a servant in any capacity. Thank you so much, Dr. Wilson and everybody else, uh, Dr. Clark, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Honorable Miller, thank you so much for those those words and for your heart. I could not agree more. Uh, that's what we wait on the Lord to show everyone uh, in his time. And uh, only he can do it. And what the great thing about that is when he sets us in that place and we're in the White House, everything that happens every day will be something the world hasn't necessarily seen before. And so we don't have to rely on our own strength. We don't have to rely on our own knowledge. We I've tried to prepare myself, not for this, but just to be the best that I could be for however he chose to use me. But uh, I know that we will seek and we rely on his wisdom every day to meet the needs and to meet the matters that will, that are before us. And that is something that I have never seen in a president before. And I, one of the things that I, I always inspires me is uh, an old time uh, preacher. He wrote, was a, a prolific author and he, he always would say, 
The world has yet to see what God will do with one person completely surrendered to him. Uh, the world has yet to see. And so it was always about less of me and more of him. And uh, that's the battle that most people face because we don't want to let go of who we are. Now we're getting into the heart of a lot of our social struggles in America, why the fam breakdown of the family and of the home and uh, of relationships and all kinds of other things, because we're also independent. And, and American culture has celebrated independence, where many other cultures do not celebrate independence. And it has hurt people financially. Uh, it has hurt people spiritually. It's hurt people emotionally because it has isolated people uh, in the pursuit of wealth or money or accumulation and out of this independent spirit. And so, uh, you know, that's not uh, helpful in exactly what you were outlining is where America is uh, and where we need to be. I thought, uh, I thought I've always heard people praying for a righteous leader and because scripturally, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. It didn't say when the righteous are in authority, the righteous rejoice. Everybody gets blessed. Uh, that's why people uh, will say, oh, well, he's going to maybe he'll legislate righteousness. No, there, there will be peace in the land. Your relationships, your home, your lot in life will be improved just because I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing and acknowledging God as the president of the United States. And so uh, lead, uh, so many things rise and fall on leadership. Uh, there, that's why there's a different standard for leaders than there are, uh, you know, and that goes for the CEO of your company. That goes for you if you're the, the, the business owner. Uh, the, 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 the standards are always higher uh, for the leaders. And the pace of the leader is the pace of the nation and the pace of the people. It's very important. Uh, I'd like to bring on uh, Stefan Wetzel at this time. Uh, he's a great help, a great uh, supporter, a great encourager, uh, and he is also uh, very organized and helps keep things moving along. And so I would like to give uh, you, uh, Mr. Wetzel, a chance to to greet and to uh, uh, share any remarks and what you see, because you get a firsthand glimpse into the campaign and the heart of it. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Yeah. Welcome everyone here again. Um, yeah, I'm very delighted to be part of the team here. And as Dr. Robert said, and uh, the campaign has been going on for some time, um, just to see how we started in January when yeah he announced his um, presidential candidacy and where we are now almost one year later, um, where We've been, for example, in, in L.A., where we saw seen so many different people, a diversity that is part of the U.S., that is part of yeah, um, the world that is yeah, there in, in L.A., for example. And everyone that is listening to Dr. Robert's words, and even if it's just for two minutes, people, yeah, they put aside all their prejudices that they maybe have against politics, against different political parties, but they see the true the truth that um, Dr. Roberts is speaking. And I think that is what the United States need and what people will always see as soon as they get in touch with you, um, when they see you, when they hear you, when they are getting the chance to listen to you, that this is, this is not about politics. This is really a, a man down to earth, but he wants to, to do a people right. And there have been so many discussions and we saw the debates on TV or where people are just so fed up, they don't want to listen to that anymore. People, yeah, don't want to fight against each other. They want to be united again. They want to have peace. They want to have their families restored. Like you were talking about the mental health issues that are so, so huge. And I mean, we have three kids at our home and we see how things are going wrong in the schools. We have talked about the shooting. There are so many things that are not working well in this country and there needs to be a different approach to it. And like Lincoln was talking and was putting all his faith in God and that is that has been missing for the last decades. And that is the chance for, for Dr. Roberts to come back. And as he puts God first, all the other things will, will fall in place. And this campaign has really been not traditional, 
and it will not be even the the future things that we are going to do. And so I'm very happy to be part of it. And I'm really thanking God that he's doing the miracle in Iowa and that we can be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. And I appreciate that. And uh, he, he's just exactly right. Uh, we, we give him all the glory because it's not us. Uh, and we don't want it to be us. Uh, that's not his way. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite Pastor Success uh, a leader in the Liberian American community in Iowa, and also a pastor, uh, to to greet the people, and then also uh, any of the the special guests that you would like to introduce as well. Okay, and so while he's he's getting those things uh, worked out, uh, let me go to uh, uh, Dr. Shirley, uh, and then uh, and then we'll come back to to Pastor Success and then Greg. Uh, so, Dr. Shirley, why don't you go ahead and greet the people? And I also want to make sure you mentioned the the prayer thon that. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Pastor Success. Good evening again, everybody. It's a pleasure having each and every one of you here in the good health. I know the cold weather. I know some of you are in state where there is no cold weather, but we're getting it all over here freezing. So it's nice to see all of you. Uh, we are making progress daily. We are making progress daily. You may not see it, but for every round that we make, around the world of Jericho, like Dr. Roland said yesterday or a day before yesterday, there is a piece of blood that falls off. And by the time we reach seven, the entire world is going to crumble down. And all we will say is to shout a victory. So let's keep the momentum. Let's keep the courage. Look, let me say this. We all here tonight know from all indication that the United States will never and ever take her hand off foreign affairs. And other countries around the world, be in Africa, be in Asia, Europe, the Caribbean, you name them. America will not take her hand off because she is a big brother in the world. But what matter is who is in charge when a miracle hand is touching someone? The person that is in charge runs the affair and determines how decisions are made to affect other countries. So if people that die to rabble with the ideology, with the foreign policy he intend to, to, to put into place, with the kind of thing, the way he envisioned Africa to be, when he is elected president, you might want to walk from here to Africa. You might want to walk from here to, to, to the Caribbean. You might want to walk from here to any part of the world because you will have what we call equality. Why it is true that you are super powerful, you will understand and see that America will treat other countries that, hey, whether they are black, they are white, they are Latino, they are Asian, we all are the image of God. And that is the kind of leadership we are, you know, putting. That is the kind of leadership we're introducing to the people of America and the rest of the world. Uh, to close to close up tonight, let me say this. Uh, I don't know if Stephen did talk to, uh, what his name, AJ, but AJ and I concluded that going, starting from Sunday, we get off, you know, the normal zone, and we will be going live where everybody within the United States and around the world can have access and people want to ask questions. They're going to ask that the ruler, they want to know who he is. They can ask in the comment section and then we can read it on the screen and he can answer them. And we're going to be doing that for the rest of the day until the primary, even on the day of the primary, we will be on live. We are also making negotiation with other bigger platforms that will relay whatever we'll be doing on 
current situation. AJ platform is called current situation. Whatever we'll be doing, we are also negotiating with other bigger platform to relay it so that other people can have access to it. So again, thank you so much tonight. It's a pleasure being here and we are together in this and we're going to have the victory that we need. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Success. Uh, let me turn uh, to uh, Dr. Shirley. And then uh, before we get to Greg, I want Mr. Aguik, James Aguik, to be able to give a word of greeting tonight. And then we will wrap up with, with Greg. So uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Shirley, and give, give a, a word for us tonight. I, my, my heart is so glad just hearing the voices here that sees the anointing uh, on you, Dr. Roberts, and that you're different. The new gentleman, uh, I, I'm not sure. I know it's, I don't know if the Dr. Miller or whoever here was talking about hearing for the first time a politician, you know, like you. And this is the difference here. You know, righteousness does exalt a nation. But Dr. Roberts come with a gift, just an anointing. When Again, when I was sitting with him two and a half hours, I wanted to make sure he had character. And someone that didn't come to this table with a bunch of pride, you know, because the Bible already tell us where that's going to end up. You know, that's going to be in in the fall. I didn't want to attach myself to anything that's already got a prophetic word attached to it, that you're going to fall. And so as you, we've been talking, you've been talking, Dr. Roberts, what's been dropping in my spirit is that is there not a cause? You know, there is a cause. And I began to just look up on Google and see what's going on. And I was just looking at the things of what's going on. And I knew that young people it was killing themselves more, more mental health problems and things. And my former executive administrative assistant, grandchild, killed himself, took a gun, young, 22-year-old. What in the world are they killing themselves, you know, for at that age? And, and so there's a bit significant increase. And a lot of it has to do with all of these things that we're fighting against to bring back some standards in the America right now. You know, you know, everything wants it. They want everything to go, but it's just not going to work. We're going to have to bring the standard back. And I believe he is the gatekeeper. Dr. Roberts is the gatekeeper for America and for other parts of this country, just like the gatekeeper to bring some standards back. And we behind the scene pushing and blowing on here. Listen, I already know it's not going to work. Billy Graham talks about the thing about revival. You know, if revival is going to work, be, what happens, three things, prayer, prayer, prayer. And so there is a cause. And as I land a plane, I'm telling you, Dr. Roberts said it, it's not about the numbers. It's about those that know their God in this season. And so when, and when we came up against 21,000 a uh, prostitute was going to come our way. Uh, I mean, uh, pro you know, prostitute, strippers needing 10,000 strippers to service the Super Bowl and sex traffic going to set up. God told me, said, is that not a cause? And the same thing tonight, is that not a call? And I called this region, 5 million plus people. And we had less than 200 people. And because we stood in the gap for righteousness, I'm telling the call. And God said, told me exactly what Dr. Roberts has set up. He said, if you would do the nations, the porters will open like in Acts 2. He said, read it. He said, the nations. So on this line tonight, I see Hispanic. I see African. I see white woman. I see a white man. You see black. See, this is how the porters open. So he told me I would heal Dallas and save the land. If we will pray, the land would be healed. And so Dr. Roberts has a model right here for success. We have uh, down below, major daughter. She probably might, we don't want to say anything from South Africa media. We got Janet here, our shofar blowers. These are the whole thing God brings. So is there not a call? Yes. I'm telling you right now, this is the model for success. Because as we pray with less than 200 people and 5 million, God locked up the region. Ice storm, snowstorm came here in Dallas and locked up the region in three and a half, a three hours radiant. No planes could go out because 200 people, less, little less than 200 leaders decided to pray. And this is what Dr. Roberts has put in place. And this whole team that you all are doing an hour, this is what you all are doing. And thank you so very much. And know that it will work 
when we work it. And I'm telling you, nothing moved here in Dallas. And like they've never seen it before. You can look it up and know that because people prayed and came together like this. Dr. Roberts, I'm convinced this is the model. You are the one. And I'm going to be, we're going to be behind you blowing and pushing you any way we can to make this happen. If you like, if you're confused, no more confusion, because there is a cause for Dr. Roberts to be president of the United States of America. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Shirley. And if we can post the link to the sign up sheet for the prayer slots. Uh, Absolutely. That, yeah, that would be great because we want everyone to be able to fill in a slot literally the entire weekend. It's 72 hours of praying, even at every hour, even during the night, there are people who have signed up to be in prayer because that is what America needs right now. Uh, most people's prayers don't ever hardly make it past the ceiling, but the people that we have that are praying are intercessors and that actually they, they are, are in a right relationship and they and we want you to be a part of that. And so you can sign up to, uh, for any hour. And uh, Dr. Shirley Clark gave some instructions on it last night uh, that uh, you know you don't have to be on your knees. You don't have to if it's two a.m. You don't have to go somewhere to. You can just pray right there. You know, in your room, uh, in your home, uh, and 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 just just pray for America. Pray for this campaign. Pray that God's will will be done. Pray that. Uh, uh, for safety, um, pray for uh, wisdom and discernment and direction, because I have so many people that come at me every single day. They Everybody just wants two minutes. Everybody. I had a congressman last night, right before we were going live. He said, I know you're about to have a your, your, your Iowa Zoom, but uh, he said, I, I had just, I watched one of your videos today. I have a thought, uh, call me. And I said, uh, I texted back and I said, is your thought from the Holy Spirit? Because that's the only thing I have time for. And he responded, I think so. Uh, I can tell you it was not. I called, I, I know, but I appreciate people who, who are who are trying to help us. But it, the, the point is there's so many things coming at us and everybody wants something and, it, and, and, mm -hmm. and it, there's so many things moving parts to running a, a presidential campaign. That it requires discernment, uh, and especially when you're doing it different. If we were running a traditional campaign, we could do that in our sleep. Dr. Clark's done it uh, many times, you know, in different ways, different for different people, different levels. Uh, so many of you have worked in different capacities on different campaigns, or or as a candidate in different parts of the world. So it's not a matter of we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. The question is, we want to do what is right for us now. Remember, uh, and this is several years before I, uh, before I obviously ran for president, I remember the Lord speaking to me about this because my biggest concern as a leader, and this was in business, this was long before it was governments. One of my biggest concerns was that I would make the same mistake that Moses made when he was leading the people of Israel. Uh, and that is when he came to a problem that God had already solved for them. And you and I have been there where we've gone through something, we figured out the solution, and then a few years go by and something similar happens and all of us kind of kick into gear. We almost get giddy and excited like, I know exactly how to solve this. And we try to do the exact same thing Moses did, and we smite the rock a second time mm -hmm. because we recognize the problem. Mm -hmm. And we, in our own selves, say, I know how to solve that. And so we smite the rock. And because of that, that's why Moses wasn't even able to enter the promised land. And so for me, I did not want to lead uh, a nation in the time of wilderness and not be able to spend one moment in the promised land uh, because of something stupid uh, that I did or prideful or in the flesh. And it wasn't even probably a bad thing. It was just, oh, I know how to solve this problem for all these people. They're, di they're dying of thirst. I'm going to solve their problem. It's what a leader does. We're going to fix things. and uh, But I don't want to fix it the wrong way. See, 
It's and, and I think most of the people probably were like, okay, he got water again. It worked. It's not just that I can get the outcome. It's that I get the outcome the right way. See, these are the nuances to leadership that right. none of the other candidates, they're so driven by just making something appear. It's just the optics that look like they solve a problem or solve it their way, a brute force, or manipulate the solution to get whatever they want. That is never the right way of doing it. And it never lasts long term. And people always are the casualties of that type of leadership. Uh, and so uh, that's certainly not how how uh, I want to lead. And that's what I pray for discernment about is those type matters. Just because I know how to run a campaign tomorrow doesn't mean I want to go into tomorrow immediately doing what I think I know I should be doing. Uh, and that's the way you have to live every single day because just because you've faced it before, there may be a new way that you need to face it now. And why do you why would why does this matter? Let me tell you why. Because you and I don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes, much less tomorrow, much less next year or a hundred years from now. But we trust in the one who knows the end from the beginning, not only of our entire lives, but of the history of the world and of all humanity, all humanity and mankind. So if seeking his counsel and wisdom, even though we think we've been there, is it just a smart thing to do? Uh, and so that's the way we want to live and govern. Let me go ahead and turn it to uh, uh, Mr. James Aguik. He is the uh, president and chair of the Sudanese uh, uh, council in, in America and is a, an, a, a citizen of Iowa. And so uh, I want to welcome you to give a word of greeting tonight, sir. Thank you. Uh, greeting to all of you, uh, Dr. Roland uh, Roberts and uh, campaign managers and the rest of the team. Uh, I'm really grateful. I'm sorry I came in late today. It's been a very busy day for me. Uh, and uh, I didn't spend a lot of time, uh, I think maybe a few hours sending a message to the supporter, but uh, the children took the day away from me. Uh, uh, so uh, I hope I'll make everything last hour today. I'll make it up tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, but uh, I came in 20 minutes late and I listened. And as always, uh, you uh, are impressive and uh, being able to deliver what our newcomers into the Zoom uh, need to hear. We told people about you, but uh, nobody could tell the message of who you are better than you yourself uh, as a great messenger. So I don't want to prolong. I want to make sure that we give you plenty of time to rest so that you could uh, prepare. Uh, right now, uh, we only need you um, to deliver a message to those who are still new to the, uh, to uh, to this campaign. But as far as myself and some of the people who already joined, we're in it to win it. So thank you very much. And may God bless you. And I want to leave as many time to our new team members if they want to say something. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday will be a very busy day for me. I'm meeting one on one with people uh, to to prepare them for caucus and also explain to them what they need done. Um, there were uh, questions were raised to me by our, our youth leader who attended the Zoom meeting yesterday. Uh, I, I answered it in my own way, but I say uh, Dr. Roland will answer it better than I do. Uh, he he say he know a lot of Somalian Americans and uh, other uh, non Christian uh, citizen that he would like to recruit uh, and he say uh, is our uh, message heavily based on Christianity and uh, my own way I say no uh, Dr Roland Robert embraced the religious it doesn't mean. He's saying that's the only religious is uh, is Christianity, but rather he's a man of faith. Whatever your faith is, that's what he wanted to encourage. He wants you to believe in your faith. Uh, but the underlying message here is that America must be led by somebody who uh, fears higher power. And as that leader fears higher power, 
uh, then he haul himself to the uh, accountable to us uh, and no better way to say it like you said a while ago uh, there is a verse in bible uh, says what would you benefit if you win the whole world but lose yourself and i think that's the message that uh, dr roland have but if there is a better way uh, that i could uh, send what should be the answer on that regard i'll be happy to hear it from our campaign manager and the rest of the team and yourself directly so thank you and I'll stop here to give other people a more chance. Thank you, Mr. Aguik. I really appreciate it. And I, I'm very grateful for the question from the one of the attendees last night. Uh, you know, there's so many different ways to answer it. Uh, but one aspect that's different than the way I've answered it previously uh, is most, every, you know, many candidates will say, I, they may say I'm a Christian or I believe in God or uh, there's even a, a candidate that is uh, professes not to be a Christian that puts out on social media every other day, God is real. Uh, but that's because he believes in, in many gods, not just uh, a Jehovah God, uh, the God of heaven. And so uh, a lot of a lot of them will always say, I am this, I am that. Um, and that's not been what we've said at all. In fact, I, I don't know that I have said that at any point in the campaign, because it's not about what I am in terms of, am I a Christian? Am I not a Christian? In, in, in my label. What is important is that I, what I'm saying is that I recognize that America needs God. See, one puts all the focus and attention on me. Like it's my resume. I'm this, I'm this. That's a used car salesman. And that is what a lot of politicians sound like. You know, I'm a Christian, so vote for me. But so what? You haven't. You don't. You don't act like one. You don't talk like one. You don't live like one. Uh, so what difference does it make if you are one or not? If you, if that's the case, uh, it, it doesn't. And in most people, their private faith is publicly irrelevant. Uh, and so the way I view it is, it's not about me. It's about him. And so I'm not going around the country saying I'm a Christian. Vote for me. I'm going around the country saying. We're in bad shape. America needs God, and that an America without God will fail. Now, if you listen to me very long at all in any setting, or you get to know me, uh, I don't think you have any problem knowing who who I am or what I believe personally. Um, but people who are used to that narrative in politics will always say, uh, "Oh, they'll legislate righteousness, or they're going to try to legislate morality." That's really what they're afraid of. And the, and, and the flip side is, uh, you know, whenever I meet with a world leader or a president, uh, it has been my practice to give them a book. Um, and I remember one of the books that I gave a, a sitting president uh, at the time, and he's still a sitting president of a country. Uh, and I wrote a, a note to him in there. And one of the things I said to him was about every king of Israel, uh, that Israel ever had, God said uh, he, they did that which was right in the sight of God or they did that which was evil in the sight of God. That's what it was about. So for me, it's not about converting you know, America to something. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. It's me being who I'm supposed to be to who I am accountable to, uh, which is God and the American people as president of the United States. So... Uh, but what I wrote in him at, at the end, I said, so it is incumbent upon you to rule righteously, govern justly in the fear of the Lord. Those are the two things that were are required uh, of kings in the Old Testament, uh, which, you know, uh, the, the conservative Jews study every day uh, in the Torah and, and in the Pentateuch and so and in the major prophets and the minor prophets, they 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 know that um uh that you have to govern righteously govern justly uh which means uh without preference uh you don't favor you know because if a man comes to you in goodly apparel uh and you know dripping with diamonds and he did something wrong to the poor man you don't say oh well uh you you don't give the him a break and go against the poor man just because he's poor uh, and so they give it gives these kind of examples of ruling righteously and and kind of blindly, 
do it because it's right, not because of who someone is or their position or their power. So that's how I answer it uh, or how I would answer it tonight is just that I don't make it about me. Uh, I make it about America, what we need in America. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, I don't hide who I am or what I believe, but I hope that gives confidence to people who don't believe, people of no faith. I hope they can listen to me and say, you know what? I don't want to do that, or that's not for me, but I'm at least glad whoever has to stay up 20 out of every 24 hours to work for our country and to keep me safe and to help keep you know my, my job going and income flowing and uh, who cares about my family. Uh, one of the best uh, examples I could ever give was when uh, uh, I was in a meeting in Pensacola, Florida, and uh, this lady who lives a very different lifestyle than I do came. She jumped up on me and gave me a hug and uh, she and, and and some people started uh, bashing that, uh, saying that, uh, well, well, he's against your lifestyle. How in the world could you even do that? And I said, and she was like, wait, 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 you don't even know him. I've known him for 20 years. And uh, and and here's what I can tell you about Roland Roberts. He loves me. And let me tell you what I feel. I love him. And that's enough for me. And so and then she gave me another bear hug. Um, and that's the kind of walls that we're seeing come down because it's not about legislating morality or legislating a set of principles. You can't. It's it's never been effective. That's the church's job to 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 influence culture and society. It would be my job as president of the United States to to govern justly in the fear of the Lord. So with that, let me uh, end with uh, Mr. Wool, if you would uh, kindly close uh, us and uh... absolutely. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Yes. I want to say when I started before this call started, I was I had asked uh, uh, Dr. Roberts if, if if we had a call tonight, and I was starting to feel ill, and I got on the call, and just the <laughs> the sheer feeling of the spirit on this call changed my complete mental and health on this call. I can tell you that it's, it's a miracle. It's crazy. Um, but, it, but it's exactly what just happened. And I, you know, and, 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 and it's because I truly believe, you know, we're, we're divinely appointed to be here right now. Um, every one of us, not one more than the other. Um, Roman's the leader here. Um, but the real leader above all is God. And I think, there's, there's a lot that we can hear in what Roland's been saying today that we don't that, that there's some very stark differences between a, the politicians I hear on a regular basis. I do as part of my living is dealing with politicians. And I used to joke with people that a politician isn't sure if he likes himself so he decides to put it up for a vote. And he finds his identity from election to election. And Rowan and and the Christians of this call, what we do is we find our identity in in, in our creator. And and that's all the difference. And and when I heard I, I love hearing uh, Dr. Clark because she she's so spot on and she said, I see people that are Spanish here, I see white people, I see black people, I see all these people together on this call. Because Christians build bridges. We build bridges. Yes, we can debate about the wall and all the other stuff, but we build bridges amongst each other. And what ends up happening is we no longer see race. We just see children of God. We no longer see groups. We no longer see, and, and, and the devil is tricky because he wants to put us in groups. He wants to separate us as if we're not on the same side so that we, so we can break us down. And, and this campaign the first thing I was listening to when we got on this call was how, how Dr. Roberts is talking about Africa. No one's, as I said yesterday, no one's talking about Africa. And he doesn't talk about Africa like, we're going to throw money here, we're going to do this. He says, we're going to loan money, we're going to invest in the potential of the people of Africa, and we're going to see the results, and all of us are going to win together. And, 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 and that's the difference between faith and fear. Because we have a country running in fear, 
They are running in fear with COVID. They're running in fear because they're going to school every day. Everything is a mess. And we see all, and, and, and they're living by sight. But we know we serve a guy that we love and a guy that, that at the end of the day always wins. Always wins. Doesn't win. And, 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 and some days are going to look harder than others. And we're going to have tough days. But we always win to the end. And, 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 and right now, we have a fight against us. You know, the, I'm, I'm, I'm a Jewish believer. And, you know, the story of Hanukkah, which just passed, is about how oil <laughs> lasted. It was, it, was, it was people who fought the Maccabees, who fought against um, the, 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 um, the Assyrians, um, who were trying to uh, basically make them uh, pray to their idols, to pray to idols rather than to their God. And the Maccabee brothers said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to pray to our God. And they were persecuted. And they and they went into their into their temple and they had had oil only for a, a night, and it lasted eight nights. And the and the symbolism there is, God can take a little, and do things that we can't even imagine. And it's not and, and His light is enough. His light is enough to, to hold us through. And we are going to win this thing. And when we go, when we win in Iowa, and when people are shot, when we we start the ball rolling and people start seeing where they're going. They're going to see something and they're going to know they're, they're going to, it's going to be very hard for any of them to deny that this was a divine action. This is not about us. It's bigger than us and bigger than anyone in this room. And at the end of the day, it, this is going to be a, 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 a campaign, not about religion, but about God's love and God's grace on America. And I believe that to my core. And I just want to say, I'm asking, I've been asking everybody because I do handle fundraising to put money in. I'm not asking you to put money in because, you know, I want, you know, us to be loaded here. I want everybody to put faith in. Okay, that's all I'm asking for is to put a little bit more of that money where they don't, they don't know where it's going to go, but that money is going to be expanded and used. It's going to be used just like it's used in any other ministry. Because what we are fighting right now is a, this is a ministry. This is an ministry that's going to have a global impact. And um, I just want to thank you all tonight. And uh, God bless every one of you. And it's an honor to serve with you in this fight. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. You know, I, I'm going to close with this story uh, that came to me as you were speaking. Uh, this was several years ago. My father, you know, we were doing a lot of things in Africa. And I was visiting in West Virginia and uh, he said he he gave um, he'd been saving for a new vehicle. And he said I was about to leave town and he said uh, he gave he gave me, I, I think it was a thousand dollars. And he said, I want to sow. I want to be a part of the blessing that you're that, that you're being over in Africa. He said, I want to reap some of that. I, I want to I want to get the blessings, too. I want to in on that. And he said, so I, he said, I've been saving for a car. And so it, actually, I think it was more than that because it was going to set him back an extra year, the amount that he was, had, uh, was, was gave, gave towards our work in Africa. And um, so he was going, it was going to delay his new car purchase for an extra year. Uh, but he said, I want to be a part of what God's doing. I want those blessings too. I want to share in them with you. And that's what you, each of you are on this campaign that help us, that partner with us, that are making the calls, that are giving so generously, you know, that's what allows us to make an impact in Iowa. And to, God uses our five loaves and two fishes to do the supernatural in Iowa. But let me tell you the rest of the story. My father did not have to wait an extra year of saving beyond what he was already going to have to do. Uh, about a week later, it wasn't the way any of us wanted it to happen, but about a week later, he was in a uh, a car accident. They hit him head on, not a scratch on him, but his car was totaled. And a week after that, he ended up with the brand new car that he would have had to keep saving up for another couple years. But instead, he sowed in faith to be a part of the miracle of what God has been doing with my life. And now, uh, with a campaign like this, everybody gets that 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 has the faith can be a part of that. 
uh, at this time. And so they've put the links uh, in the chat, in the Zoom. Please click those. If if you're on social media, go to rollandroberts.com. A box will come up. Give generously. Give what you feel led to give. Uh, we're 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 blitzing and doing everything we can in Iowa, obviously because of how close we are, and we know how important Iowa is to to the world, to everybody else. Uh, God's going to keep doing whatever He wants to do with our campaign and put us where we want, regardless of what happens in Iowa. But the whole world, He gets the glory when we win Iowa, and that's exciting, and that's what we're 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 working towards. And and with your help and the help of God, we will we will see. So please give, click the link right now. That way it's on your phone, if you're watching my phone or on your website. Uh, and then I would also encourage each of you to follow us on the social media, we, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, X, you know, whatever the, the, your platforms are, feel free to follow us. Uh, we're, we're very regular on those. And it's a great way of interacting. So much of the social media though, is all the normal people who just wanna fight each other and debate each other. And that's not what why we're on there. We're not putting sensational things out, you know, three times a day and, you know, trying to put out clickbait and uh, recycling a bunch of things. It's actually things that we put thought into and that we say, okay, I don't want to speak for, for, for noise sake. And so much of what we have in politics is noise. So if I speak, if I ever give a national address to the nation, if I put something out on social media, it's because I believe America needs to hear that at that moment. Uh, there are things that I plan to say. I have probably a hundred different tweets in, uh, you know, in drafts, because whenever I uh, th the Lord gives them to me, I, I I I put it there. But until I know that this is what they need to hear now, because I never want to be contributing to the problem. I don't want to be part of the noise. Uh, I want Americans to know and the rest of the world to know that when Roland Roberts opens his mouth, it's because it's something we need to lean into. And here, I'm not going to yell it. I'm not going to scream it. And I'm not going to, you know, uh, put it in all caps and blare it at you. Uh, the most important people in my life don't have to do that to get my attention, uh, beginning with God himself. He has a still small voice. And so I want to make sure that what we speak is things that will help change uh, and, and contribute and shape uh, your thoughts on, on uh, whatever the topics are that we're talking about. I want to thank you all for being with us tonight. It's been a wonderful Friday evening. Uh, we have a few more days, nine more nights, uh, culminating into the great victory. Thank you for being a part of the miracle in Iowa. You are truly a blessing. Uh, it's about all of us. It's about all of you. It's about the immigrant voices that will be raised in America, the power, the influence that they have never had to this degree ever in a United States presidential election and we are 10 days away. So God bless every one of you. We'll see you tomorrow night. God bless. Good night.